everybody and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be in my pantry. It's been a long time since I filmed a video in this room, but today that's what I'm working on and I thought I would take you along with me. But you know what? We're going to talk a little bit about a subject that has been going around these last days and that is hoarding or home storage. Now, I have a Facebook group and somebody posted this and I thought it was really interesting. I'm really thankful that our Facebook group is such a beautiful place to be. Everybody respects one another and we have really good discussions on topics. We posted this and it was something going around on Facebook that was being shared. And I thought, wow, what a wonderful way to make a video on this because this is something that I am absolutely passionate about. As you know, in all of my videos, I love to can, dehydrate, and food storage. In fact, food storage is my number one videos that I make all through the years. But we're going to discuss a little bit something. And I am going to be looking at this page because I printed it out. So the number one thing it says, what's the difference between hoarding and home storage? Hmm, that is a really good question. Especially nowadays, you know, everybody is thinking about home storage and of course, Everybody is thinking about hoarding. I'm going to go through what was said on here and then I'm going to share with you my thoughts on it because they're just a little bit different. So this is what the paper says. This is what is supposed to be the definition of hoarding and home storage. And I have a little bit of problem with some of the things that are said on it. Let's see what you think. Hoarding is buying more than you can possibly use during the time you're preparing for. Hoarding is buying items at the expense of others. Hoarding is not being willing to share. Hoarding is not rotating your supplies. It's hiding or carefully guarding your supplies. Hoarding is fear-based. Home storage is buying what you believe you will use during a specific time. Helping others get what they need too. Being willing to share. Using and rotating items and it's love-based. So let's get into this because this has, was a big discussion on my Facebook group. So hoarding, to me hoarding is this. Many of you don't realize, but I love watching hoarders. I love watching the hoarders shows. In fact, I can get them free on YouTube and I love watching them. Most of the episodes are the older ones, but I just love watching them. I love seeing all the hoarding, but then what I like is seeing it when it's all cleaned up. It actually motivates me to get cleaning my own house. So hoarding to me is this. Hoarding is when you go and buy a whole bunch of food, throw it into the corner of your room in a box, and you never do anything with it. This is not hoarding. Way back when, before all this took place, the number one thing a troll would say to me is I'm a hoarder. This here is not hoarding. And my thinking is it's not hoarding because it's organized, it's clean, it's safe, and it's being used. And it's being rotated. To me, this is home storage. Hiding and guarding your supplies. Now that could be a real tricky one because I don't believe hoarding is guarding your supplies. Now, as I did a video on way before all this happened, I did a video on how, me personally, that if troubles would come, I would help out people. And I feel like that is in my, that's just my DNA, that's how I'm brought up, that's how I'm raised. But not everybody feels that way. And some people feel like their food is their food, and they're not going to share it with anyone else. That is a personal choice. I don't necessarily think that hoarding is hoarding your supplies. To me, that doesn't mean like hoarding. I understand what their meaning is because hoarders oftentimes won't share, but not always. And so I don't think just because you guard your supplies means you're hoarding. Hoarding is, to me, taking a whole bunch of stuff and not using it. I got in hot water over this uh, many weeks ago when I talked about how buying one and buying two or three of something, that is not hoarding and that's not taking from others if you're going to use it and you are a prepper like me. Now if you're going to go and buy it simply because you're fear driven because you think if you don't get it you won't be able to, to me that's kind of hoarding. So you know a lot of these lines are just there's no black and white and sometimes in life there is some gray areas and so 
I didn't go out and buy a whole truckload of toilet paper simply because everybody was saying to buy it. That would be hoarding. But now, whenever I go away, I do buy one extra because I realized that was something that I was lacking in. Home storage. Home storage is a rotating grocery store to me. And buying what you believe in a specific time. Now, for me, there's no specific time for me. This is a two-year supply. I rotate it every single day of my life, you know. And so the specific time really can change. depends on who it is. If there was a family of five in this home, this food would not last me more than probably six or seven months. So you can't really judge the time on having home storage. I really recommend people have six months to one year. And it's easier to do that when your household is only two people, like my husband and I. Once you start having children, it's a whole different ball game because you have to have food based on what your children's needs are. As an adult, we are not needed the kind of supplies that children are needed. Children need more protein. Children need more vitamin D. And so you have to just tailor everything. Home storage is not the same thing for everyone. While this may look like a lot to some people, to other families or the Amish community, they would think this is really nothing at all. It just depends on where you're raised and brought up. So why am I in here today? Well, my daughter went through some of her food. And see, this is one thing I always taught my children. We don't have an obsession with food, but we do realize that food is something that's not to be wasted. In my home, we didn't have a food pantry like this. My mom did when she was growing up, but she, doesn't, she didn't do any of that stuff anymore. But we were always taught not to waste our food. And so everything in life is not to be wasted. That's my motto on everything, and not just food. Don't waste anything. Don't waste things that you could reuse, and that's what my channel is about. Number one, it saves you a lot of money. You know... A woman can throw out her back door twice as much as a man can bring in in the front. And that was an old saying back in 1950. So what does that mean? Well, when a man brings in a paycheck, the woman could throw out more than what he brought in if she didn't take care of her food. That's a really old saying that I grew up with. And it's just the typical way of saying you can bring food and money in, but if you waste it, you can throw out more or as much as you brought in. And it's so surprising how little bits of food that would be wasted, how you can turn that into things. And all of you guys tell me how you turn things into soups and things into stews and casseroles and how you take the freezer and put little things in the freezer and then when you have a bunch of it, you make soup with it. You know, that was the Great Depression. And then we had the 80s and the 90s, and things were really looking good. You know, people weren't thinking about the Great Depression anymore. People were thinking about instant. You know, that's when the instant things came about. I on the fast food industry, where it's your time, you can get it real quick. Everything's fast, fast. And all of a sudden, we had a pause in life, and I talked about that in earlier videos. And all of a sudden, now we're thinking about, hey, you know, the Great Depression could really happen. In fact, some would say it is happening, and the Great Depression could even be worse than the first one because of all of the debt that people have. Back in those days, they didn't have the debt like they do now. So, hoarding versus food storage. You know, we could talk all day about this because it just depends on your perspective. And that's what I say to everybody. Listen, your perspective may be totally different than mine. I talked about millennials and how millennials don't seem to understand, you know, and that is, that's not a general term. That is just saying, you know, there are some millennials who have no idea where money and food come from. They have no idea what the Great Depression was like. That's not saying all millennials are that way. That's just saying some are that way. Most likely the older generation remembers the Great Depression or remembers things of hard life and times like that. There are some millennials that grew up in the city that have really hard time with food access. They don't have the food. So they realize that. I'm talking about the millennials that would be in the middle to upper class where they were raised. And when they were raised, it was a time where everything was bought. Everything had a, didn't have a price on it. And so that's what I mean about the millennials. But you know what? It's becoming back in style. The back to earth and the back to your roots foundations where people are actually learning how to cook and can. I love it. I think personally that home ec 
class should be back in. They should be back in the public schools because I think home ec is so vital important. Home ec classes is amazing. Teaching you how to budget, te teaching you how to cook, clean, sew, all of these things are important. As a conservative, you're going to understand what I'm about to say. If you're not conservative, you won't have the same viewpoint. But to me, fundamentally, the breaking of our life is because the breaking of our home. And the breaking of our home is because there are traditions that are no longer being held. There are uh, values and there are structures that are no longer being held. And then that, where the home goes, the world goes. And I believe that 100%. I believe that the home structure is extremely important. I believe teaching your children how to work is extremely important. Teaching your children skills, life skills that they're going to need for when they grow up. And so I'm really passionate about those skills because that's how I am. I'm conservative. I was raised that way. I was born that way. And I will die that way. This is how I am. And so I hope you enjoyed this. I might talk a little bit about you know how I do believe that the old ways are coming back and I do have great faith in the Millennials in fact a lot of them watch my channel and that is a testament to say some of them are waking up some of them are realizing that tomorrow may be different than today and one thing that we can take away from all of this is it did make us think how it made you think that is up to you but to me it made me think a lot about you know it just makes me want to press on to the old ways of living because the old ways of living one it gives you satisfaction it does it gives you satisfaction I come into this room and I take pride in it not a pride of look at me but a pride an internal pride of you know Tessie really did something you know it looks good and two it gives you determination it, it's fun to take food and create something with it that was going to be thrown away. My pantry is 75% of the food in here was free going to be thrown away. 25% of it was grown with seeds that were castaways that I planted and I harvested. Nothing hardly in here I paid for. But now we're going to talk about something else because some people wonder a little bit about this and why in the world would I do this? Why would I recan mustard? Why would I go to all that trouble buy commercial mustard and recan it? Why would I can beans? You can get it dried. Why would you go to all that trouble and can beans? Why do you recan stuff? It doesn't make any sense. That's because you're not a canner, that's because you're not a prepper, and that's because you don't know a whole lot about food storage. Why would I recan mustard? It's so simple and easy. I can get mustard, a gallon of it, for about $5. That gallon of mustard gives me about, I think, it's like 25 pints. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. It's a lot of jars. I can can it and have it for pennies compared to what it would if I'd be buying it. Why do I recan it? Because, yes, mustard lasts a long time, but why would I want to have a gallon of mustard in my refrigerator for what, two years? When I can recan it in small amounts like this, I give it as gifts, my children come and love to pick it up. But now I bet you're all saying, but wait a minute, Tessie, you're not counting in the lids and you're not counting in those jars. Well, you know what? I have counted all that in because my lids and my jars are always free. How could I do that? Now, I know not everybody could do this, but once a year for my birthday, I get a little birthday money from my parents. I turn that birthday money and I get lids with it. Jars, I got most of my jars for free through free cycle. I'd get them free. People didn't want them. I would scour the internet and looking for free jars. That was back about five years ago. I was gifted some jars as well. So if somebody wants to get me something, they know exactly what to get me. For Christmas, like my children, my children know what I like. So my children will buy me jars or buy me lids or buy me, I think my children bought me one time a bunch of potatoes that I canned. This is what, how I am. And so they know what I like and it makes my heart so happy. So you got to take into that. Also, at the end of the year, our tractor supply has lids for half off. So I get them for $1.49 a box. And I get two years worth then. I save my money for that. And so there's different ways of doing things like that. And 
as an Amazon affiliate. You know, when people use my links, I only get about, uh, I think, 3%. I get 3% uh, cash back on that. But you know what? $20 here, $20 there buys me quite a few amount of lids. And that's where I put my money. I put my money in food storage because that's, that's just my thing. Everybody has their own thing in life. So that is why I recan. So why in the world do I can beans when they're dried? Beans take a lot of water. What happens if you get to a point, things get really bad, and you really need your water for essential items? Well, now you have canned beans. All you got to do is open it from the can and heat it or eat as is. I could take the lid off this and eat it cold. So dried beans to me really don't do me much of a favor because dried beans take so much water and it takes so long to cook them. I just put them in the pressure canner and in, this is 75 minutes and then it's done. So it's having food on hand. There are just so many ideas and so many things that you can do. And this is something that came natural to people years ago. And I think it is uh, coming back and I'm really happy for that. So I'm going to work in my pantry here today. My daughter gave me this box. Of, it's on the floor. I keep looking down at it because I want to get it cleaned up. A lot of you love when I'm in my pantry like this and I would like to do more videos like this. Usually it's in the winter time because in the summer we're outside. But if you have any canning questions, ask me. You know, my channel has over a hundred and some videos on canning and everything that you see here Everything you see here, I have a video on because all of this was within the last four years. So I have videos on everything here. And I know some of the things are not USDA approved. And I will always say they're not USDA approved if they're not. But if you are skilled and you're taught in the ways of canning and you understand the facts about canning, it's really simple to know what you can and what you can't. And I just really enjoy it, like my butter. I canned my butter for the first time, I think a little over a year ago, maybe it was two years ago. I was a little apprehensive about it. And I know it's all over the internet, but I was a little apprehensive about it. And you know what, I love it. For me personally, I love it. Because when this all took place, what was I reaching for? I was reaching for my butter, and it is amazing. And so I, I love it, and it's great, and I'm so glad I have it. And the recanning of the cheese. Oh my goodness. If I had a dollar for every time somebody fussed about recanning of my cheese, what's the big deal? Recanning of the cheese is amazing. I can it in little pints like this, add a little bit of cheese to my casseroles. You know what? It may not be the healthiest, but you add a little bit, it goes a long way. And you know what? It's cheap. It's frugal. Everything is in moderation. You know what? Even the healthiest foods, if that's all you ate, probably wouldn't be so healthy anymore. And what is healthy in these days and ages? You know, in the beginning they used to say fat-free stuff. You have to buy fat-free. Fat-free salad dressing, fat-free. Then they came out and said, well, the fat-free has chemicals in it. And then they're saying, you know, milk, you know, or eggs. Oh my word. For what, a whole year they were saying you shouldn't eat eggs. Then they were saying you should eat eggs. And so, you just got to go by your gut feeling and you got to go by what you feel is right and you got to go by moderation and everything in moderation everything in moderation you know having the cupcake it's not bad to eat that it's eating the whole cake and that's with everything in life and I could really get in a rant about things in society right now and how they it's either all or nothing and it's moderation it's all in moderation thank you guys so much for watching and thank you so much for your point of view on hoarding versus home storage you know what do you say what do you say is the difference between hoarding and home storage and are you still learning lessons about all that's happened you know with our food and what are some things that have changed you that you're never going to go back to what some things that are you doing different now that you will never go back to the old way i would love to hear what you have to say about it Back in December, Backwoods Magazine had a sale where it was half off. I think for $12 I bought the year of the magazine. And Jackie Clay is a hero of mine when it comes to food storage. And somebody asked her a question in this month's or last month's magazine and it was something that people have asked me hundreds of times and I told them an answer. 
But deep down, I never really knew quite what the answer was. And she had the same answer. Somebody asked, when you recan food, they said, what is the shelf life? In other words, if you recan food that would have an expiration date that was expired or about expiration, she said you start the clock as it's new. Now, I don't know where she gets that from, but that's always what I thought. I always thought when you recan something, that is the new expiration date. And that's what she said. So I really want to thank Jackie Clay for just confirming to me what I always thought. You know, if the food is good, but it's almost expired, and you recan it, you set the date back. Now, that's a good question, and that might be a little controversial to people, but I'm just telling you what she said, and everybody in the prepping community would consider her an expert at canning and food storage. If you're watching this video, I know it got pretty long. It tends to get long when I talk about food storage. <laughs> All right, everybody, we'll see you guys tomorrow. And a big mwah! Bye, everybody.